I'm Jacqueline Black, Abigail Hagen, and Grace Hollander. Our project is A Legacy in the Sky, Jacqueline Cochran and Nancy Love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 1938 Bendix Transcontinental Air Race from Los Angeles to Cleveland, the world's fastest and most dangerous air race. If you remember, Amelia Earhart competed in 1935 taking 5th place. It looks like women think they can race as well as men, with Nancy Love taking second in last year's competition. Well, we all know that it's a man's place in the cockpit, and I'm sure that this year will be no different. I hear a plane coming our way now. Why, it's Jackie Cochran and her silver P-35 winning the race at a blistering 250 miles per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, these women know how to race planes. Why, if it isn't the ever so famous Nancy Love. I've heard so much about you in your air racing competitions. As you know, I compete as well. We women have to stick together. Congratulations on winning the Bendix, Jackie. You're right about sticking together, but during races and such, I never really want to start a fuss with those men. They can be so disrespectful sometimes. Thank you, and you see my point. I've been watching Europe, and I think a war might break out. England's going to need our help. I hope to be corresponding soon with Eleanor Roosevelt to start a women's flying group in the Army Air Forces. What do you think of that idea? I've actually had the very same idea. What do you think of a fairing squadron? I like it, but I'm thinking bigger, bolder, more women flying. Dear Eleanor Roosevelt, the year is 1939, and we still don't have women flying? I am proposing that we start a women's flying division in the Army Air Forces. I feel that qualified female pilots could do all of the domestic non-combat aviation jobs necessary in order to release more male pilots for combat. Women could be used effectively in all sorts of helpful back-of-the-lines work, as for instance flying transport planes, thereby releasing male pilots for combat duty. I would greatly appreciate your thoughts and help. Thank you. Sincerely, Jacqueline Cochran. Miss Eleanor Roosevelt. Miss Cochran, I received your letter and I found it very intriguing. I understand that you propose to start a woman's flying division in the U.S. Army Air Forces. I'll take it into consideration, but in the meantime, on the advice of Lieutenant Colonel Olds, may I ask you to research how many woman pilots there are in the United States and their interest in flying for the country. Yes, ma'am. I'm already studying the information from the Civil Aeronautics Board, and I will have the report to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Dear Colonel Olds, May 1940. I am proposing the use of female pilots in the military. I have been able to find 49 qualified women pilots I can read as excellent material. Most of the women have in the neighborhood of a thousand hours or more and have flown a great many types of ships. I would greatly appreciate your help. Sincerely, Nancy Harkness Love. Why, that was fast. Now what did he say? <laughs> Dear Nancy, I received your letter about women pilots in the military. I found the idea very interesting, and it's definitely a first, but I think I'm willing to take a chance. Please contact General Hap Arnold to see his take on the subject. Best wishes, Colonel Olds. Well, I'm on my way to a meeting with General Arnold now. Hello, General. Ah, oh, Nancy, was there something you wanted to speak to me about? Yes. I suggested the idea of female pilots in the military to Lieutenant Colonel Olds, and he's willing to give it a try, but wanted your consent first before going forward with it. Nancy, the use of female pilots serves no military purpose to this country, which has adequate manpower at this time. Woman pilots in the military. You are dismissed. I really thought you'd feel differently about this, sir. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. You wish to speak with me, sir? Yes. Do you recall back in 1940 when you came to me and requested the use of female pilots in the military? Well, the attack on Pearl Harbor has shaken everybody up quite a bit and have had a change of mind. Get those women organized and you will become the leader of the WAPS, the Women's Auxiliary Fairing Squadron. September 1942, the training shall begin. Thank you, General. We will not let you down. Nancy Love announced the leader of the WAPS? No, this cannot be right. I have to speak to General Arnold this instant. General Arnold, what is the meaning of this? I just read that you put Nancy Love in charge of the WAPS, when I, clearly superior choice for leader of this type of program, had to hear of this upsetting news from the newspaper. I've set 73 records in just three years, participated in many air competitions, 
Not to mention, I won the Bendix in 1938. Was the first woman flying solo to do so. Hap, what more do you want from me? Now listen here, Jackie. I put Nancy in charge of this because she came to me first. She already had 49 excellent woman pilots more than willing to participate in this program. And what about all my work with Eleanor Roosevelt? I went to her first in 1939, and we really have been progressing forward. Yes, Nancy is a marvelous flyer, but sir, isn't there some way I can be a part of this as well? Well, I suppose we can try and get something up and running, but let's face reality for a minute. Two groups of women flying in the military. Congress is never going to allow this. They hardly passed the idea for just one group. Oh, don't you worry, Hap. Just leave that to me. Oh, Jackie, the WAPS program is just coming along swell. The girls are learning navigation, meteorology, radio, Morse code, and so much more. But, oh, how I wish you were committing with me. Well, Nancy, I just might be. We can work together and win this war. You with your WAPS and I with my WFTDs, Women's Flying Training Detachment that Hap just appointed me head of. We'll come together and form the WASP. The Women Air Force Service Pilots, and we'll show those men just who they're dealing with. Well, let's get those women training, then. I'm a flying wreck, a risk in my neck, and a hell of a pilot, too. A hell of 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 a pilot, too. Like all the jolly good flighters, the gremlins treat me mean. I'm a flying wreck, a risk in my neck, with a good old 318. October 1st, 1944. To each member of the WASP, I'm very proud of you young women and the outstanding job that you have done as members of the Air Force's team. When we needed you, you came through and have served most commandably under very difficult circumstances. The WASP became part of the Air Force's list because we had to explore the nation's total manpower resources and in order to release male pilots for other duties. We now know the nation can count on thousands of its young women to fly any of its aircraft. You have freed male pilots for other work, but now the war situation has changed, and the time has come when your volunteer services are no longer needed. The situation is that if you continue in service, you will be replacing instead of releasing our young men. I know that the WASP wouldn't want that. So I have directed that the WASP program be inactivated and all WASP be released on December 20th, 1944. I want you to know that I appreciate your ser war service and that the AAF will miss you. My sincerest thanks, and happy landings always. A.J. Arnold. Hello and welcome to the 67th anniversary of the start of the WASP on this beautiful 5th of August 2010. Back in 1942, some 25,000 women applied to join the WASP. Only 1,830 of them were accepted and took the oath. 1,074 of these women actually passed the training and earned their wings. And sadly, 38 of these courageous women died while flying. We are here today to honor and remember these women who fought for equality to show the boys that we can fly just as well as they can. Now let me introduce myself. I'm Sally Ride, and on June 18, 1983, I became the first ever U.S. woman in space. The leadership of Jacqueline Cochran and Nancy Lump helps you open up minds into accepting women in the military. Now on to our next speaker of the night, General Chuck Yeager. In 1953, Jacqueline Cochran was the first woman to break the sound barrier. I know because I was her wingman when she did it. Jacqueline Cochran went on to hold more speed and altitude records than anyone alive at her time, and that record still stands today. Nancy Harkness Love was awarded the Air Medal for her operational leadership in the successful training and assignment of over 300 qualified women flyers in the flying of advanced military aircraft. Colonel Love continued to champion for these women who had served as WASPs. They were awarded veteran status in 1977, and then in 2009, President Obama awarded the women the Congressional Gold Medal. And for the final speaker of the night, the first female Thunderbird pilot, Captain Nicole Malikowski. Thank you, General. The lost rates during World War II were staggering. We lost 57,000 aircraft during the war. That was about 170 aircraft and 220 aircrew per day. Thank goodness for the creation of the WASP to free up men for the front lines and to get aircraft ferried around the U.S. for delivery and training. They opened up cockpits in the military so women would be able to fly. Jackie Jacqueline Cochran and Nancy Love led the way for women in aviation. Their legacy is shown today through female pilots who continue to break down the barriers of flight. We salute you.